Alright guys, he's Inky here, welcome back to the channel for another Street Fighter Duel video. So, I'm doing two videos, actually, I'm going to be recording them back to back, because one is going to go a little bit deeper into, I, I got topics around in this, um, but first of all, I want to talk about this banner and really how free to play players should really be approaching this banner, and to be honest, the banners like this in future, okay? So let's have some real talk right now. If you are someone who is still playing Street Fighter Duel, clearly there is something in this game that you enjoy playing, right? Because is it even a secret at this stage to say that this game is not very free to play friendly? No, it isn't, right? Let's just be completely upfront about that. However, it really depends on your perspective on things about if you view it as being free to play friendly long term or not, right? Because the reason I say that is as the game goes on and as the game progresses, you are going to have opportunities to pull characters, right? You are going to have opportunities to get the likes of your Bisons, your Vegas, probably your Sagats, because they'll most likely be added to this kind of standard divination pool. Your other characters, most likely your fashion characters in future that are maybe a little bit more, I want to say, high tier. So characters like your fashion Ryu, potentially your fashion M. Bison, probably your Pharaoh Sagat, who technically not a fashion character, but I'm going to class him as one anyway. Those are the type of characters that you're likely to see ending up in this kind of special pool, right? They've obviously said they're going to do things with limited time collabs as well, like global exclusive collabs, you would expect them to end up in this banner as well. So as a free to play player, as a low spending player, how should you tackle these type of collabs, okay? Now, first of all, I just want to say that when I give advice out to people, I give advice based on if you are a true free to play player or if you are a player who isn't willing to go all the way to SSS, right? So this isn't a me saying I'm going to necessarily practice what I preach or whatever because, you know what, I, at times I just have bad impulse control and I can't help myself, right? I've not done it here and I'm not going to do it here. Um, we do talk about this at length on the podcast that's going to be coming out pretty soon, cheap plug. Um, and I go into a bit of detail about like my own personal history and pain talks about it and stuff like that and um, but what I want to say first of all is when it comes to limited time collaborations right so if I move myself over Dante has 13 days 10 hours right the way that you should approach this if you are free to play is ask yourself a question are you going to stay free to play right straight up are you going to stay free to play if the answer to that question is yes, you should skip this banner entirely, right? Entirely. Now, I know that might seem rough, right? Because you want to get a copy of the collaboration character. So it's going to seem rough to you. But you need to ask yourself a question. What is having one copy of a unit going to do for you, right? If that's your plan, what is having one copy of a unit going to do for you? Now, if you summon on this banner and you get him first multi, then great, you've spent 10 tickets and you've got a copy of Dante. You can have him as a box warmer, as a trophy, as something that allows you to change your avatar. I don't know, right? But you could be someone like me who went eight, nine multis before you even got one copy, right? That's 90 tickets, okay? Now, you could apply that logic to any unit that goes into this type of banner, right? You could spend 10, you could spend 100 before you even get one copy of the unit because this game is refusing to put in pity, right? I'm not even going to talk about that anymore because you know what? It's like flogging a dead horse at this stage. But one copy of a unit that is limited is going to never do anything for you. However, however, we apply that same logic to someone like Akuma a different story right and the reason I say that's a different story is because he's not going anywhere right so you trying to pull this guy if you get a copy of him cool you're not going to be able to do anything with him however over time you are more than likely if you continue to dip into this banner you are going to get more and more copies of this unit 
and eventually he's going to become viable for you, right? When we look at other units like Dante, and by the way, from doing like, just so that you guys know, um, from doing, not this, from doing a lot more of this, I actually got lucky and I got two more copies, right? I should have recorded them. Do you know what? Some of the videos suck, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I think it's the worst content that I actually put out. Um, because the summoning on this game is pretty boring. Like, I like games like Dokkan where you've got animations and fake outs and all that kind of stuff. This one, it's just like, brum, there's your units, brum, there's your units. There's nothing really exciting about it, you know? And even to make it into a video, you've got to do things like select them one by one. Come on, it's boring, so I'm not going to do summon videos very often, right? But anyway, for units like Dante, you're never ever going to be able to get them viable, right? You're, you're just wasting your time, you're just throwing your tickets away, and you're never realistically going to have anything to show at the end of it. Because as a free-to-play player, unless you have the absolute luck of the gods, right, which is probably like a 0.01% chance you are not going to get this unit up to a viable level. So what you should be doing in these events, because now they've kind of more or less shown their hand, right? They've shown their hand of what they're likely to do with these events going forward. Because we've now had two, and in those two events, you've had 50 tickets from login, right? You now know that if you qualify for the likes of Super Showdown and stuff like that, you are going to get up to 50 tickets depending on how you do, right? So even if you just qualify, you'll get five, right? You can buy your free tickets a day from the shop, which while they're expensive, you can do it. You can buy those tickets, right? So all of these things that you can do is going to allow you to build up what we'll call a secondary fund, right? Or what comes after secondary? Not, I mean, is it just third? Maybe that's the word then, right? So obviously you've got your standard, which is your tokens, so your arcade tokens, your secondary fund, which is your diamonds, and then you've got what we're going to call your thirdary fund, I don't even freaking know, right, which is going to be your tickets. Now, over time, if you go through two, three events, you can build up a stash of these, you can build up like two, three hundred of them, right, and you could get lucky, you could be the person who goes into the latest event the day that it launches, before you've even had the tickets that you can earn from that event, and whatever that character is, you could just immediately smash out and get yourself an SS copy, right? SS isn't as viable as Triple S, however, I would still argue that SS is at least viable, right? There's probably going to be units that come later on who are completely viable at SS, you don't have to get them to Triple S. For people like you, who know they're not going to spend, that's what you should be waiting for, that's what you should be targeting, right? Because at the end of the day, as much as these games are about collecting your favourite character, unfortunately, if you're not willing to spend money, the reality is it's not going to happen, right? So what you should really be focusing on is who is going to help you push content, who is going to help advance your account, and who is going to help you make strides within the game. It doesn't even matter if that turns out to be someone like... I, I don't even know, man. Who's 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 like an unpopular Street Fighter character? I think everybody's kind of liked in some way, shape, or form. But I don't know. Let's just say like Dan. Right? People love Dan, so that was a bad example, right? But let's just say Dan, right? There's a there's a Dan that's going to come out in a few months' time that even at SS rank, he will absolutely blow up and help you really push content. If you've sat on your tokens waiting for that character to come along you're set. Whereas if you're someone who's got the typical gacha urges of, oh my god, there's a new unit, I've got to get them, and you blow your tickets every single event, you're always going to be at the state where you're going to be lucky whether you can get one or two copies of that unit and make them viable, right? So as hard as this is going to be to hear and for you to probably action and do, if you are your stereotypical gacha head who just wants to summon for everything that's new, you're playing the wrong game. I hate saying it right because I like this game, but the reality is we need 14 copies of units like this and Akuma and all the rest of it. The chances of you just going into a banner, hitting it when it's new and walking away with the spoils of war, so to speak, um, it's just not going to happen. 
So you have to change your approach to how you play this. And you have to, particularly with this game, change your approach to how you're tackling banners and how you're summoning. So when it comes to collabs, when it comes to new units, you first of all want to assess how limited are they. If they're one and done, like Dante, skip it. If they are someone like Akuma, who you're still going to need, say, 14 copies, you know what? Why summon right away? Right? It's going to take you 14 copies to use them anyway. So why not build up the stash of tokens? Build up your tickets till you've got maybe two or three hundred. Resist summoning. Because by the time you've actually saved up enough of those tickets to actually go in and have a fair sh chance of getting a Kuma, lots of things could happen. They could reintroduce pity. There could be a new character that's announced that actually is going to do more for your account than Akuma would. And it means that you won't regret all those tickets that you spent chasing that unit who, let's be honest, it's probably not going to push your account on any. You know, it's just, it's just facts. Akuma's not. Um, same as Dante. Dante's seriously, he's not pushing anything, right? I'm, I'm not even going to laugh at Mark, right? Because we have a bit of a, we have a bit of a conversation about it on the podcast. Um... But realistically, going ham, spending money, whatever, to get a unit that's triple S that you know deep down is probably not going to do anything for your account. It's not the smartest of moves, you know. Um, even if you have got the money to spare, it doesn't really matter. If it's not going to do anything for you, it, it's pointless, you know. You're, you're not going to walk out and buy a new smartphone because you like the look of it and then shove it in your drawer because it's hopeless, you know. It's, it's not what people do. You don't just spend money for the sake of spending money. Like... There's usually a reason behind it and advancing your account and pushing on to beat more content is what your key focus should be, especially if you're free to play and you've got limited resources. So instead of getting hung up on these banners in future and thinking to yourself, oh, this sucks, I can't get this unit. Really, what would this unit do for you anyway? You know? So while these systems do currently suck and they do have to improve 100%, like so much they do, Help yourself out in the meantime. Save your tickets. Skip these. Skip these. Skip these for a while. Because, again, unless you can go into these with a good amount of tickets, you're not going to walk away with a usable unit anyway. So just build up a stockpile of these tickets. And by the time you've got a decent amount where you can maybe hit these banners and actually potentially do well, they're going to be filled with a lot more characters who actually might help you. You know? Anyway, guys, that's it. Pearls of Wisdom. I've been Heezink, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.